All right, what's up, guys? This is Matt here from Loon Outdoors. And today we're just going to tie an elk hair caddis. I know it's not the most exciting pattern, um, but it's a great baseline pattern for getting started on so many tying adventures. Um, so I have a size 10 in here. So it's a big, big one, uh, big caddis pattern. So I just wanted you guys to be able to have a great amount of uh, visibility in the fly to be as clear as possible. So I am going to tie this a little bigger than I normally would. So here in Northern California, I'm typically tying these in a 14 to 16. Um, and then only once a year do I get to tie like big, big guys like eights and stuff like that. And that's during our October caddis hatch. Um, so the thread I use is Beavis 50D and you can see I just take touching turns all the way down the shank of the hook. Um, I'm gonna insert some mono here. This happens to be Siglon. Um, it's made by Sunline and I was using it because it was UV reactive for high stick nymphing um, as part of a leader system like five or six years ago. Um, well, since it's been sitting for so long, I really don't trust it. This happens to be 10 pound, but you can see it just glows like crazy. Um, so I secure that along the shank of the hook. And when I secure it, I put it down the side. So I get like a wider body versus um, a taller body. Um, and what I'm gonna use here is just a little bit of dry fly dub. This is a cinnamon caddis blend. Um, cinnamon caddis out here in the West are one of the most, one of our, uh, most prolific hatches on the lower stack and the trout seem to absolutely love them. So I'm going to create a dubbing noodle and I'm always cautious to make sure that I press hard enough so that all of the color goes out of my nail beds. And what I'll do is I'll just take touching turns with the dubbing moving forward. And I do just kind of press it back just a little bit to create a little bit more of a buggy look behind the fly. Um, you can brush this out at the end if you want. And I'll create a little bit extra up here at the thorax. Um, that's where the head's going to go. So I'll take one step forward right to where I'm going to be about ready to finish the fly. Um, and this is just a, one of those little hundred packs. This is a saddle hackle. This one happens to be a, like, I think it's a furnace. Um, and I'm going to tie that in. Now, when you tie it in, there's a shiny side towards you or a dull side towards you. I like to have the shiny side towards me. It allows me to work this back nice. So we're just going to do kind of a candy cane activity here. And that is going to be most of our hackle for our flotation on this fly. Now you notice I try to end right where this piece of mono stops. So what we'll do is I'm not going to go over every wrap, but I am going to use some uh, and just kind of create this way to hold all of this hackle in. The end result on this is that you have this cool fluorescing body. Um, so it's a UV reactive material, like I said, you saw it glowing. It almost reminds me of like fiber optics on a bow sight. So I trim that all back and I get a nice solid body and you can see that it just really pops inside. Let me see if I can just get up there a little bit, but you can see that glow. Um, the fish sometimes totally dig it. If they're not digging it, you can use like an ultra small uni or something similar to that. Um, so a lot of times I just use premium deer hair. You can see here, it's a nice uh, deer with little, a limited amount of under fur. Now under fur, it might be hard to see, but if you get in here, there's a bunch of fluff down in here sometimes. This patch doesn't specifically have it, it's one of the benefits of uh, buying a premium product is you don't get a, a ton of under fluff. So what I do is I take like almost a pencil's width and I work through it and just get everything I can out of it. And I'm gonna look and see how bulky that is. We're gonna put it in our hair stacker. Um, this is the new Zippy Stacker from Loon. And I'm going to give it that some taps. Now it's cool because with that zippy stacker, you can see that all of your hair is stacked. You turn it sideways. And when you go to take your pinch of your, your hair, you'll notice when you take it, you want to take it out with the hand that you're going to use to hold it. You can always come back in and manipulate, but I'm going to take, I'm just going to take a little bit out of here. Um, it was a little bit much for me. You can see we're still really well stacked there. 
and we're going to take one wrap. Now this wrap is loose. We're going to take a second wrap and then we'll go ahead and we're going to snug down and then take a third wrap and a fourth and continue to snug down throughout the process. Okay. From there, what I like to do is I will bring all of the thicker ends or the butt ends, which would be closer to the body forward. And I just simply trim at a 45 degree angle. And then what we do here is we're gonna go ahead and I just like to lift up a little bit and I like to whip finish underneath here. It's my personal personal way of doing it. Um, and a lot of times I like to turn my, my fly to the side and pull that up and I use a hand whip finish technique. So that's just my personal choice on how to whip finish. We'll go ahead and stop there. Um, because I do tie with white thread, I always have a marker handy. Color up that head a little bit and trim up this little fiber that I kind of got stuck out of the way. I'm going to use a little bit of fluorescing. Um, and for this application, I use it off the brush. And I just allow that to soak and permeate into that thread wrap from our final, final piece there. And you can see again, it's just going to glow like crazy. Um, and from there, you can kind of just come in. And I don't mind having a little bit more flotation up front at all. So you just get this nice little elk hair caddis pattern. You can notice that I don't bring the wing very far past the body. That's pretty, pretty standard there. Um, overall, this is going to be a nice high riding dry fly. You can throw a dropper off of it as well. If there's also, say, like PMDs coming off, um, it's, it's going to float really nice. Hope you guys enjoyed and learned something. Thanks for watching.